Greetings and welcome back. Kamal here with more awesome calculus content and in exchange for these efforts I ask from you only one thing. And that is to build me an army worthy of Mordor. Or equivalently you could just subscribe to the channel, like the videos, share the videos, and comment for the algorithm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that would do. Anyway, back to the integral. We have the integral from 0 to infinity of x times sine x times the logarithm of 1 minus e to the negative x dx. And wow, that is one gorgeous looking integral. We have a little bit of everything. The x here, so yeah, polynomial function. Then we have a trig function in the sine function here. We have a logarithm and we have an exponential function. So this thing is extremely cool, but how exactly do we approach a solution development over here? Well, we could make use of the logarithm here because we have log one minus something. And recall that log one minus z can be expanded as the negative of the sum over k from one to infinity of z to the k over k provided the absolute value of z is less than one. And this is clearly satisfied for z equal to e to the negative x on our interval of integration. So this implies that i equals the negative of the integral from 0 to infinity, terribly sorry about that, of x times sine x times the sum over k from 1 to infinity of e to the negative x to the k would be e to the negative kx over k dx. Now this thing is independent of the index variable k, so we can take it inside the summation operator. And we have i here equal to negative integral 0 to infinity sum over k x times e to the negative kx sine x over k dx. Now thanks to this exponential term here, which, which acts as sort of a damping factor, there are no problems regarding convergence, and we can switch up the order of the integration and summation operators and get the negative of the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over k times the integral from 0 to infinity, terribly sorry about that, of x times e to the negative kx times sine x dx. So we need to evaluate this integral here, which is pretty interesting because it looks a lot like a Laplace transform. The only problem is that we have an extra x term over here. But that's not really a problem because we have Feynman's trick of differentiating under the integral sign. So starting off with the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative kx times sine x dx, which is just the Laplace transform for the sine function with the s variable being renamed to the k variable, this thing equals 1 over 1 plus k squared. So what we need to do is differentiate this thing with respect to k. So that gives us on the left the integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative with respect to k of e to the negative kx times sine x dx. And on the right we have negative 2k over 1 plus k squared squared. So differentiating gives us the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the negative kx, and because of the chain rule, we have this negative x term here as well, sine x dx equal to 2k, negative 2k that is, over 1 plus k squared squared. The negative signs cancel out and we have this really cool looking integration result. So that means our integration problem is now completely a summation problem. So i here, equals negative sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over k times 2k divided by 1 plus k squared squared. The k's cancel out, and that means we're interested in evaluating negative 2 times the sum, terribly sorry about that, the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus k squared squared. Okay, cool. Now, how exactly are we supposed to do that? Well, there's this really cool infinite series result I derived a while back. I'll link that in the description box. That the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over k squared plus alpha squared equals pi times the hyperbolic cotangent of pi alpha over 2 alpha minus 1 over 2 alpha squared. Yeah, I think I proved this using 
complex analysis. I think there are two different proof videos I've made for this. I'll look for them or it and then just link it in the description box. Okay, cool. So we're, we're interested in alpha being equal to one, but not right now. We're interested in alpha being one later. First, we need to figure out a way to get a square around this thing. And that's pretty easy. All we need to do is differentiate. So we'll differentiate this with respect to the alpha parameter. And that gives us on the left, the sum over k from one to infinity of negative two alpha over k squared plus alpha squared squared equal to, let's see, we should have the negative signs would cancel out and we have two over two alpha cubed. So that's just one over alpha cubed plus now I'm going to need the quotient rule. So that means we have alpha times the derivative of the hyperbolic cotangent is negative hyperbolic cosecant squared pi alpha. And of course, because of the chain rule, we have another factor of pi. So let me just move this thing around a little bit over here. In fact, I might need to move this thing to the left. So we have negative pi times alpha times the hyperbolic cosecant squared minus, well, hyperbolic cotangent pi alpha and the derivative of alpha is of course one. Divide the whole thing by alpha squared and we're home free. All that's left to do is a bit of simplification. So expanding by one over two alpha, negative one over two alpha that is, we have the sum over k from one to infinity of one over k squared plus alpha squared Notice that we invoked Feynman's trick of differentiating under the integral sign, and then we differentiated an infinite series. So yeah, this was this was a pretty cool all-round calculus video. We had a little bit of everything regarding functions in the integrand, and now we have integrals, derivatives, and infinite and infinite series expansion. So this is awesome. This is definitely one of my all-time favorite videos. So what exactly was I about to do? Oh yeah, expand by negative one over two alpha. So that gives us negative one over two alpha to the fourth power. And then let's see, the negative signs cancel out quite nicely, meaning that we have plus pi over four alpha, but there's an alpha term over here, which cancels out quite nicely over here, meaning that we have, wait, we have pi squared up top, times four divided by four alpha squared that is times the hyperbolic cosecant squared of pi alpha awesome and then we have another plus sign and we have pi times hyperbolic cotangent of pi alpha divided by four alpha cubed now the target case is alpha equal to one and we have to multiply the whole thing by negative two which results in something quite beautiful all of this implies that i here equals one minus pi squared over two times the hyperbolic cosecant square of pi plus pi over two times hyperbolic cotangent pi. And you know what? Let's just write these ratios in terms of the reciprocal ratios. That is i here equals one minus one half times pi over hyperbolic sine or cinch of pi whole thing squared plus one half. No, wait, wait, wait. Multiplying by negative two means we have a negative sign here, negative sign here and pi over hyperbolic tangent pi. An absolutely gorgeous looking calculus result following from a beautiful integral the solution to which involved some of my favorite tools and tricks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.